Hi guys, welcome back. So we've got a new little project on the go. After watching Jake at Sub-12 air gun and strip and service and S510 last week, it spurred me on to pull my finger out and get mine sorted. Now this is a nine year old Ultimate Sporter. I've had it from new. Internally, it's completely stock standard. A few cosmetic tweaks as you can see, but it sits here in an S410 Biathlon stock, which is a quite a rarity. These actually had the magazine holders cut out onto the side of the stock here. Now, in my opinion, had the factory built this in this configuration, it would have been the ultimate, ultimate sporter. So today we're going to cover how I did the camo finish on the stock there, how I added some texture into the flutes up the front. And then going forward, we're going to be bringing a few of my other rifles onto the channel because let's be honest, stuff like this is hideously expensive. Most of you aren't going to be wanting to spend this sort of money or even can justify it. It's a little overkill for the majority of the shooting we're doing. So we're going to be bringing a lot more mid-range and also I've got a few more budget rifles on the way as well. So we're going to have a whole spectrum of rifles at different price points from the very entry level, mid-range and the top end so we can do some decent comparisons. So yeah, let's get into it, shall we? Okay, so you can see now I've stripped it all down. I've removed all of the hardware. We've got the magazine holder out, the cheek hardware out really quite important if you've just got a solid wood stock of course you're unlikely to have all the hardware in there but make a note of how tightly any of your accessory rails or things actually fit into the stock here because if it's quite a tight fit this is a very snug fit we certainly couldn't afford to get any truck bed liner in there for instance because you won't be able to get that rail back in there so just make a note of how tight a fit everything is and if that is quite tight as it is on this one here we're going to mask this off before we do the final painting as I've already mentioned, this has got a factory lacquer finish on it, which is in quite good order. So we don't really want to disturb the lacquer if we don't have to. Of course, when we start putting in some slight tweaks to the stock, we will expose the bare wood. But if your lacquer is in good shape, it's generally best to leave it be. We will key that up and you can paint straight over it. Now, if you've got a bare wooden stock, if you've done any repair work or anything like that, then you want to go on to the next stage. In a moment, you'll see when I've taken this out, I'll show you how we seal it up. But pay very good attention to all of the areas where your cheek hardware and things might fit again this cheek mounting block is a tight fit in here so we'll need to mask that up and be very careful that we don't get any excess paint or anything in here or make a rod for our own backs if we do and the same with the inlet this is quite unusual this one this is the mounting surface the whole air cylinder floats in these stocks so this is the mounting surface that action actually is quite a tight fit into there this lacquer is in pretty poor shape so what i'm going to do is actually use some of the sealer that we use here just to seal that up but after that going forward i'm not going to paint in this portion of the inlet that bit will be masked up the rest of it again it's already sealed by the lacquer but we will give that a quick paint because there's no contact with the action there so we'll seal all that up paint it as well so right let's get the chisels out we're going to knock off a little bit off the edge here and then we'll um, start keying it up for some paint after that Right, hopefully you can see I've just put a little bit of a relief in here that just straightens up my trigger finger a tiny little bit because of how soft the poplar is. I mean, walnut, any of the hardwoods, you can do that with a gouge easily. I just had a few swipes through and then I've just came at it with a 240 just to blend it in. So the lacquer's now blended into the sort of exposed woodwork there. What we're going to do next is go over it with 320 very, very carefully. Now these are sponge backed pads. We're going to go over and key the whole lot of it first. Now, what you do need to be incredibly careful of, you can probably see that little swage line there if you like. We don't really want to break through the lacquer and these areas, it's very easy to put too much pressure on and break through and expose the woodwork. So we're going to go very gently over it with the 320. Then we're going to start looking at sealing up the exposed piece of woodwork here, any other areas that may need some sealing up. So let's get into it. Mask on. The dust off of this is bloody awful. Okay, so I've keyed it all up nicely. Unusually, this cheek piece was obviously painted from factory, so I've just given that a really light key up. We're going to dust it all off in a moment, but this is what we're going to seal it up with. In the UK, this is quite easy to find. So this would probably be called polycrylic, actually, if you're in America or somewhere like that. So it's basically an acrylic type sealer. It's for toys, all sorts of stuff. It goes on really well. Now, actually, it's quite thick. This actually will grain fill quite well. So if you've got a completely bare stock or exposed bits of woodwork, a couple of coats of this have worked in. If I'm just in a small patch area, I'll just work it in with my finger. But you let it dry, you can flat it back again. And because of how thick this is, you can actually incredibly smooth off a piece of wood. You can lose all of the grain if you need to. That's exactly what I did on the cheek piece of the XTI. So that was a piece of, I can't even remember, some scrap hardwood that I had. 
a couple of decent coats of the old polycrylic so the clear toy sealer it works very very well then you can paint over the top of that beautifully and it will look lovely so that will match in with this finish on here so overall quite happy so far you've probably noticed that i've put in a little screw eye at the bottom there you need to obviously consider how you're going to hang it up for painting i'll probably end up putting another one down in the rail here so i can maneuver it and manhandle it quite easily and the same with the cheek piece there if you had a screw on butt pad for instance i would absolutely avoid using the screw holes that hold your butt pad on because if you damage them threads you're going to just make a rod for your own back to be honest so put another hole in somewhere sort of concealed that you won't be able to see it or even use some of the stock mounting hardware holes if you can put something in there a little bit of bar something just so you can manhandle it maneuver it all around of course you need to make sure you've done that before you think about painting it because you don't want to get caught out and go oh god how can i move it so i'm going to give this a quick wipe over and then we'll get some of this sealer on all right so that's the sealer itself so we can literally just get a dob of that on there and work it in now we don't want this to run too far we don't want it to get in the inlet or any places we don't really want it but we can let that sit on there damp for the moment it doesn't flash off and doesn't dry that quickly so we're just going to let that soak in for the moment then we're going to go up into the inlet here slap it on I'm just going to leave that damp for a moment, just let that soak in as best as possible. Then I'm going to try and work in a little bit more with my finger and then we'll let it dry. Right, so that's had a few minutes now. It's starting to tack up a little bit, so we can just work that in into the edges. If there's any runs or anything like that, wipe them off now before it dries. Now, depending on how porous your grain is, if you've got a particularly coarse grain stock, anything like that, you can do a number of different coats on this, but the poplar is quite tight grained. That will actually seal that up perfectly. In all these little nooks and crannies in the back of the inlet, these are places that moisture always gets into. You get rain in there and stuff like that. So it's really not a bad thing to leave a little bit of extra sealer in there. It certainly won't hurt anyway. Just make sure that all of your mating faces are nice and smooth and flat and there's no dimples or ridges or anything weird there. So that's actually sort of soaked in quite well. There was a few bits of exposed fibers in here. So quite happy with that really. Right, I've given it a little chance. Everything's dried off. I've dusted it all off so there's no remnants of dust on there as best as possible i've started masking off all the rails and bits and pieces and there's gonna be a safety warning for the next bit i'm gonna ghetto rig a little spray booth outside so best read what's gonna go on screen and i'll see you outside in a moment Right, that's looking pretty good so far. We've got a couple of coats now of primer on here. I'm just gonna give it a quick flat back with the old Scotch Bright just to remove some of the little fuzzy bits that we've got on here. Then what I'm gonna do is make sure I peel back my masking just a little bit so that it's not covered over. I've got a little bit of an edge there. We've still got a good few more coats of paint to go on yet, so it's not really too much of a worry. So I'm gonna give it a quick buff back. What we're gonna do is mask off all of the stock apart from these little flutes down the side here. And then we're gonna spray that with the truck bed liner to put the texture in here. Of course, we've already got a stippled grip on here. And instead of stippling this, we're going to do it with truck bed liner. Then I'm going to go, whilst this is drying, and go and collect some plants that we're going to use then to do the actual camo pattern itself. And then I'll show you how I do that. So quickly going to scotch bright it now. This is silver scotch bright. So it's, I think, 1500 grit, something like that. Just need to take off any fuzzy bits. Right, I'm going to give that a quick dust off, get any fuzzy bits off, get any dust off of there. I'm going to get a tack rag and give that a good wipe over.
Right, I've got a fairly crude masking job on there. When we hang this up, we need to make sure that we keep the actual rattle can itself absolutely parallel with the woodwork itself so that we don't spray up underneath of the edges. Now we're gonna do this with the truck bed liner, which goes on quite thick, but we need to make sure we shake that incredibly well first. So we'll get that done quickly once this is dry and then we'll go and find some nice bits of twig up the farm. Right then guys, it's the next day. It's had a good chance to dry. Now I should have paid better attention to my own advice. That masking job was pretty crude. I've actually got some of the truck bed liner that seeps up under these edges and it looks a little bit tatty. So I've been picking at it here just to clean it up. What I am going to do is flap this top edge off of here just to remove these raised edges. It's gonna be quite easy to make good. I've also though, unfortunately, and what is more annoying, inside all these little cutouts in the side of the stock here, you can probably see on the corner there that there's actually quite a lot of fuzzy bits. Now it looks as if that stock never had anything sealing it from factory, which is a bit annoying. So I'm gonna get in there with some sandpaper and I'm probably gonna just patch repair the primer up the front here. And then we can then look, once that's dried, we can look at actually starting the camo in process. So I'm gonna tidy this up a little bit. Next thing you'll see, this will probably have a little bit of extra primer on the front here. Not to worry, I can primer straight over the truck bed liner on these edges, so yeah. Bit of a bummer, but I need it to look a little bit better than it does, especially in these little corners here, because that looks pretty poor. So I'll be back to you shortly. Right, we got away with that, actually. That wasn't too bad. So I've just block sanded over the top. That's 800 grit on a just a little piece of wood, just over the top, and we've got a nice crisp edge here. Now you can see that I've exposed some of the primer, or sorry, some of the clear coat underneath. So we're gonna give this a quick flat over the top, just for a bit more primer. I've actually given this quite a nice clean up in here now. It looks an awful lot better. It wasn't actually that bad. Just use a little bit of, a, well, it's actually a bit of eight mil um, bar, just with a bit of paper around it. Just clean all the edges up nicely. It's come out all right. So obviously the primer itself always highlights any imperfections but I couldn't have left those. To be honest, we could have painted straight over that and no one would have been any the wiser, but these were the bits that were really annoying. So quite happy, I'm gonna quickly primer this now and then we'll get back onto the camo in, shall we? Oh, that was really worth doing. Let me just bring you in there. Where I block sanded over the edge there, I've got a lovely transition between the smooth sides and then the texture bit in the flute there. Hopefully you can see that, but actually it was worth doing. Looks a lot better. I've cleaned out them little cutouts in the side. You can still actually see the primer highlights all of the overspray from that factory lacquer. That's why I never lacquer anything that I make because it hides the multitude of sins. But it's okay, it's all well sealed up in there. We won't see it and we don't really want to get in there and disturb it if we don't have to, but happy with that so far. Little trigger finger slot looking pretty good. As soon as this is dry, then we can actually start the camo in process. Right then, the primer's all done, so we're finally ready to start the camo in process. We're gonna do it in two colors. So we've got the ultra matte green and the ultra matte black. Now, basically we need to put a base coat on first. So I'm actually gonna do it the wrong way around because I want the majority of the stock to end up actually green. But if you wanted your twigs to end up green, you'd actually put the green as your base coat, effectively cover over the green, and then we spray over the top of that in the black. That then when you remove your twigs off of there will leave you with green leaves, but I want to do it the other way around. So the first coat that I need to put on is black. Once that's blacked out, we're gonna then jauntily lay on all these twigs. It's quite windy out there, so we might have to prop them up, maybe tape them down to a board. I've got a whole selection of bits of bush here. Sam's got some pretty cool twigs out there as well. But the first thing I need to do is I'm doing it the wrong way around is the black. If you wanted green leaves, then you'd put your green down first. But like I say, I'm doing it the wrong way around because I like the look of that. That's how I did the silencer that was already on the action. It's the wrong way around. I quite like it. I prefer the greens, the main color. So, but normally you'd probably put your green down first. If you're using three colors, you may even want to use some stencils to put some block color in, some tan or something like that as well. But on two colors, we'll do a couple of coats of each. So we're gonna start with the black, ultra matte just do some very delicate light coats build that up to a nice finish because that will effectively be the surface finish the final finish and then of course we go back over the top of that once the twigs are on with the green so black on there now <laughs> Right guys, this is looking pretty good now. I'm glad that we went back and spent a bit of extra time cleaning up all these edges on here because that's a lovely transition now between the textured piece in the flute here, then the rest of the black top coat. Now, the process is basically gonna be, I'm gonna have to bring my little um, ghetto rigged spray booth into the shed, unfortunately, but we're gonna basically prop up various bits of the plants all over it, 
trying to cover the whole thing in one go, do one side at a time. Now, it's too windy outside, it's all going to end up going everywhere, but what I may have to do is actually end up taping these down so that they stay in position. And once we've got the rattle can, a bit like when we was painting against the masking, we need to make sure that, so again, rattle cans don't work too great when they're on their side, but we need to be very careful that the paint just drops down. We don't want to be sort of spraying it underneath at an angle too much, so we do need to attempt at least we do need to at least try and attempt to keep it perpendicular with the stock itself. So this is now going to be the color that the leaves will actually end up being once they're removed and the green will be the top coat on there. So I'm gonna move my spray booth around and see if we can't mess this up, eh? All right, this is the first go, honest, promise. <laughs> right, what I've done now, you can see I've left the stems on the plants quite long, so I've taped them down. Now, of course, I wanted to use the plants from the garden. It always looks pretty cool, but of course you could use stencils. If you've got a grass like sort of twigs or whatever, you can just hold them on as you spray it. But I wanted to try and get this as natural looking as possible. I've not done it like this exact way before, but obviously from the first go that we had, it didn't quite pan out. As I thought, everything just blew away. I'll put the footage up of that at the end for those of you that want to have a little bit of a laugh, obvious really when you look at it. But now I've taped all the bits down. Hopefully they shouldn't go too far. So we're gonna spray it from a reasonable height and let the paint drop down so that we're fairly perpendicular to the stock itself. Hopefully this lot won't blow away. Let's go. Some of these little leaves here, the ones that are in important places, I've actually put a little tiny bit of white tack underneath of those just so that they can't move too much. Right, that looks really cool. Although it's a bit um, labor intensive doing it with all the leaves on there, I like this sort of subtle blending where the spray sort of comes under the edges a little bit. It's not quite as harsh as when you've got stencils or anything on there. So now this matte finish paint is actually really quite robust. You don't need to lacquer over this. Nice textured bit there in the fluting down the sides. I'm still missing a few of the component parts actually put this back together. It's been a long time since I last used this. I'm not quite sure where everything is. So I've got to sort the barrel band out, trigger guard and a few other bits and pieces, but I'm quite happy with that to be honest. Very cool. Right, let's get this place tidied up and we're going to get it out tomorrow. Right, so I've had Samantha come and lay all these out for me. I've got to be honest, it looks pretty cool, but I think this is going to puff off the minute we attempt to try and spray this. So we're in the shed now, we're out the wind. I'm going to stand up above it and basically drop the paint onto it from a bit of a height, and hopefully these will stay intact. If they don't, you'll probably notice in a minute that the next cut, it will be sanded back and you can probably see remnants of where we've repainted it, but we shall, we shall see. Right then guys, we got there in the end. As you can see, the old girl is looking fantastic now. Unfortunately, it's not quite ready to go yet. We can't start using it for the moment. I've got a few bits that are missing. I need to actually find my magazine catch plate at the top. No idea where that is. I'm also trying to source a fresh barrel band or the actual cylinder support for this, and it desperately needs a service. It's completely full of, well, dust, junk, scum. All of the grease has turned to sludge now. However, we have got an invite down to the factory, down to the Air Arms factory. So what I might do when we're down there is give them the action, get them to service it so it's completely stock standard as it left the factory originally. And then we know going forward that we've got a baseline to work from. So pretty interesting. And I've also just had a delivery 
direct from the US of A. Where mate's just sent us through some of the new Benjamin pellets. Now these have just appeared in the UK for sale. These ones came straight from America, from New York directly. So as soon as the weather allows, we're gonna get out and test these as well. I don't think that we'll be able to use the Ultimate Sporter, that won't be ready in time, but we've got all the other rifles to test them. These are one I've been really looking forward to testing. So they look fantastic in the tin. First impressions of these Benjamin jobs are really, really good. So hopefully as soon as the weather allows, we'll get out and we'll test those. So I'll see you in the next one.